All right, in part three, we're given a generic two by two matrix A. We're asked to find the determinant of A and the adjoint of A. And assuming the determinant of A is in zero, find a formula for A inverse. Okay, so determinant of A, that's a formula that you need to know. It's A times D minus B times C. So that's the determinant of A. To find the adjoint of A, we need to go through and find all the cofactors. Okay, so how do you find the cofactors? C11. Well, that's the signed minors. So this is negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 times the determinant you get by deleting the first row, first column. That's just going to give me D. C12 is negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 power times the determinant of what you get when you delete the first row, second column. That's C. So that gives me the opposite of C. C21 is negative 1 to the 2 plus 1 times the determinant of what you get by deleting the second row, first column which is B, so I get the opposite of B, and C22 two two is negative 1 to the 2 plus 2 times the determinant of what you get by deleting the second row, second column, and I'm going to get A. That simplifies then to 1 times A, which is A. So notice the plus or minus on the cofactors follows that alternating pattern that we mentioned before. So from this I can make the cofactor matrix. The cofactor matrix is you just put the cofactors in C11, C12, C21, C22. So C11 is D, C12 is the opposite of C, C21 is the opposite of B, C22 is A. The adjoint of A then, oops, is defined as the transpose. So the first row becomes the first column. The second row becomes the second column. So that's my adjoint. Now, from class we know that if the determinant of A is not zero, a inverse exists. A is invertible. And A inverse then is 1 over the determinant of A times the adjoint of A. So assuming that the determinant is not 0, A inverse is 1 over AD minus BC times the matrix D negative B negative C A. So if we look at this, uh, the determinant is something that we know. Uh, what's happening at, if you just look at these elements, the original position of A and D is reversed in the inverse, and B and C are in the same position, but their signs are reversed. So that's somehow, sometimes that's how they teach the inverse of a 2 by 2. That'll do it for number 3. Okay, in number 4 we have a little theorem to prove. We have to prove if... A is similar to B, then the determinant of A and the determinant of B are the same. So let's uh, think about our strategy here. So we have an if-then statement. So what I need to do is I need to assume A is similar to B. Then I need to show the determinants are the same. Okay, so what do I know that's going to help me out? Well, first I need to figure out or remember what this means. A is similar to B means what? Means that A is equal to P inverse BP for some invertible matrix P. And what else do I know? Well, 
I'm trying to show the determinants are the same, so I'm going to wanting to be, I'm going to want to take the determinant of both sides. So some determinant properties that'll be of use to me. I know that the determinant of the product of two matrices miraculously is the product of their determinants. And I also know that the determinant of an invertible matrix, uh, if, if A is invertible, the determinant of its inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. So these are two uh, theorems that we've had, we have from class that will come in handy. So here's the proof. Assume A is similar to B. There exists a matrix P so that A equals P inverse BP. That means since the determinant is a well-defined function, I can take the determinant of both sides. The determinant of a product of matrices is the product of their determinant. Now this property says I can break it up for two factors. Well, you can use induction to show then you can break it up over as many factors as you want. I just have to group two at a time. So by repeated application of that property, I get this. Now I'm going to use the fact that the determinant of P inverse is 1 over the determinant of P. At this point, the determinant of P cancels. Guess what I get? The determinant of A equals the determinant of B. Remember, once uh, I get to this, all these quantities here are now real numbers. The determinant of A is a real number, the determinant of P inverse, the determinant of B, determinant of P, all those determinants are real numbers and so I can just multiply them around and cancel them out as needs be. That'll do it then for number four and that'll do it then for quiz five.